the world center of racing, Daytona International Speedway, home to horsepower and speed. It's auto racing's premier venue. And today, it's the site of the most competitive triathlon in the world. Countless world champions, Olympic gold medalists, the defending Challenge Daytona winners are a part of the best triathletes on the planet going head to head to win the largest purse ever. Over $1 million is on the line. On the women's side, the Brit Holly Lawrence is in peak condition to climb to the top of the world rankings. And her fellow countryman, Alistair Brownlee, has the entire field wondering if he can be beat. Where does the power come from to see the race to its end from within? Drivers, start your engines. As they come to the line two by two, green flags in the air for racing. The world center of racing, an evolution before our eyes. How bad do you want to win? The most anticipated moment in racing. Rage. Rage. Against the dying of the life. He's won a million dollars. One million dollars. If you'd like to make a call, please hang up and try again. And welcome to the PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona. An absolutely gorgeous day here at Daytona Beach, Florida for what promises to be one of the greatest events ever in triathlon history. Hello everyone, Rick Allen alongside Belinda Granger, a 15-time full distance and challenge Roth winner, as well as three-time Olympic swimmer, Rowdy Gaines. And Belinda, I'll start with you. A unique event here at Daytona. Honestly, Rick, unique for so many reasons. I mean, we are pitting the best short course athletes against the best long course athletes over a distance that neither are accustomed to. Add to that the fact that this is the first true championship event of the year. It's going to be simply incredible. And Rowdy, it seems as though somebody built Daytona International Speedway <laughs> for triathlons. It's all right here. Yeah, it's amazing because it's right there behind us. 480 acres, 44 acre lake, 2.8 mile track, all in the most iconic stadium in the planet, in my opinion. We've talked about how unique it is. How about the fact that the top 40 PTO ranked male and female athletes are in this field. We have the biggest purse ever in triathlon history at over $1 million sitting out there for them. Now, the women are going to have the course to themselves. They will start at 10 a.m. Then, when they're finished, the men will start at 2 p.m. We have boots on the ground right amongst all of the athletes, and we're going to go down to Kevin McKinnon right there now. Hey, thanks, Rick. The feeling down here is electric. This is a, a, just an unbelievable feeling. I wish everyone could uh, go through what I'm experiencing right now. Goosebumps. It feels like a world championship pumped up with tons of juice with all that money up for grabs. The athletes are just getting into the water now, doing their warm-ups, and you can feel the energy down at this uh, swim start. It is going to be rocking in just a few minutes. Just as Kevin was saying, there's lots of nervous energy down here. Um, I think we're going to see desperate racing. People have not had the opportunity to race, make money this year, and with over a million dollars on the line, they're going to be willing to lose to win. Uh, awesome, amazing opportunity for these athletes today. Can't wait to see what's about to unfold. Thanks, Alicia. Let's take a look at our women contenders today. The highest ranked PTO athlete is Australian Sarah Crowley and Germany's Annie House. PTO ranked fourth will be someone to watch during the run for sure. Holly Lawrence is one of the favorites and Heather Jackson comes in as the top ranked American. And at the bottom of the list, you have to look at Nicholas Spearing and the Canadian defending challenge Daytona champion Paula Finley. Let's take a look at how it got underway. The best women in the world here fighting at Challenge Daytona. Yeah, you're so right. They're fighting nerves right there. And then all of a sudden, all of them grouped in there together. You see so much splash, a lot of fighting out there. And somehow or another, you try to get out there, and that's exactly 
what Hall did. Get out there in that early lead and then just clear sailing from there. And that's the feel that you want to have. Even though she bumped in that buoy, as you said, Belinda, I don't think it caused her that much trouble, especially as she moved out in front into that next buoy. She learned. She did, and, uh, and honestly, here they are coming out of the water from that one. Again, I was really surprised to see such a tight pack group, but now we can see it's exactly as we thought was going to happen. Lucy pulling away, Lauren Brandon trying desperately to stay on her feet, to stay connected. Not long to go now before we will see them exit the water and enter T1. Now let's join the Women's Swim Live. We had predicted, uh, looking back at previous uh, performances, that it would take Lucy a little over 25 minutes to finish this, maybe 25 and a half minutes to finish this distance in Lake Lloyd. And it looks like she's going to be pretty close to that number. And so we know that Lauren Brandon also having a very good swim here. Jody Stimson, Lauren, Holly Lawrence, a part of that second pack that has really got a lot of chop going on there, but staying at least close enough to Lucy Hall so that they can still see them when they come out of the water. Nicholas Spirig, Paula Finley, all fighting for position here in the water. What I'm most excited to see is Jeannie Seymour, okay, who is, is in that second group. What's fascinating to see to talk about is that Jeannie is not renowned for being a super quick swimmer, but so to see her in this group is really exciting because Seymour is also another athlete that is a phenomenal runner. So to see her so far up so early in the race is great, great news for Jeannie and fans. And it's surprising a little bit. We thought it was going to be around 25 and a half minutes coming out of the water. It could be faster than that. So really Lucy Hall setting a record pace here. She's coming out of the water a little bit quicker than what we would have thought, Kevin. Uh, she sure is. She looks fantastic. And my guess is she's going to be just a touch over 24 minutes uh, for this 2K swim. And uh, again, it's been really interesting to watch her lines. Uh, she's taken some really strange lines. Lauren has been swimming a much more direct path, but just never able to get up to Lucy Hall's feet. And I'm also a little struggling a little bit. Lucy's working so hard on the swim. Seems to me that might be pushing just a touch harder than she actually needed to. Uh, having Lauren around to help her would have been fantastic, but she is looking strong as she comes out. Here comes Lauren Brandon now, and she looks fantastic. Looks very under control. This is uh, yeah, what we're used to seeing as she comes out of full distance swims regularly in the top. And now we have a group of four, uh, it looks like a group of seven, seven or eight about to come on out. And this transition is to jog until they get to their bikes. They'll put the helmets on. They won't put the shoes on until they actually push their bikes out of this transition area. That's correct. All of the bike shoes are clipped into the pedals on the bike. They are not allowed to mount their bikes till they get to the official mount line. So they'll wetsuits off. That's, as you can see, that, that is a short course transition to, done to perfection. Uh, no mucking around there. Straight out to that mount line where Lucy will jump on. Do a few pedal strokes to get some speed up on the bike and then those shoes will be on her feet within seconds. Alicia. Here we are in T1. I'm sorry I'm out of breath. I just ran here. We have Lauren Brandon in second place, just probably 15 seconds down from Lucy Hall. You'll notice she's clipping her helmet, getting her bike off of the rack and heading down to that mountain line. As the women start to transition out of the water and on the bikes, it's Lucy Hall leading the way. You're watching the PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona. More to come from Daytona International Speedway after the break. Welcome back to the World Center of Racing, the PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona. The bike portion of the women's event has begun. Let's take a look at the highlights. It was Lucy Hall who was first out of the water, first onto the bike. You have to run until you get to the exit of the transition period. A little craziness behind him, and that's that's normal for the triathlon. You've got to make sure that you have everything ready and you're in position to be able to jump on the bike. Lucy Hall held on as long as she could. Paula Finley was able to take over that top spot. And then Paula Finley and Lisa Norton continue to almost work together. There's no drafting, but it was Lisa Norton who stayed within striking distance until she thought it was time. And she made the move, was able to get by Paula Finley and Lisa Norton out front. 
bike portion of the triathlon here at Challenge Daytona. You know, these athletes are used to doing races where maybe the top three is decent money and then it falls off very, very quickly. Right. One thing that I love that the PTO has done for this particular race is, as we said, not only is every athlete being paid, but that actual prize purse breakdown from first through to 20th is exceptionally good. So even to finish in 15th place today, that is a decent payday to take home. So, you know, I know Lauren would be very, very happy with the top 15 spot. But what I will say, and one woman we haven't spoken about. This is for the lead right here, as we're seeing Lisa Norton has slowed off the pace just a bit, and Paula Finley coming up now. I think this will certainly help Finley because of the actual mind games now. You start to play a little bit. You know, I'm just biding my time here. This is what I've got left here going into this transition. So Norton out of the saddle now, but because the reason she did that first, it gives her an opportunity to obviously stretch out her hamstrings, but also because once once Paula makes that pass, she has she has to be shown to be, to be dropping back as quickly as possible. So yeah, out of the saddle, stop pedaling, automatically yeah, drops back. back throughout that 20. And you know, this is not surprising, guys. This is not surprising. They will end a transition together. It's not something that Lisa will be upset about. Right. All right. It's she knows that Paula's there. She maybe was giving splits that Paula was dropping off by a couple of seconds. But at the end of the day, that's nothing over 80k. Um, and so it's no surprise to see these two coming into transition together. Um, Lisa, of course, would have liked to buffer just because we know that her running may not be exactly as Kevin said where she wants it to be. But if these two go into transition with the lead they've got, they'll still both be very, very happy. With, with that scenario. But one of the big things that I want to say, and we haven't spoken about it, and I didn't realize um, one of my little spotters out on ground, Kat Matthews, so Katrina Matthews, who recently won Ironman Florida not so long ago, is out of the race. So that is a huge disappointment. Kat Matthews was one of the favorites here today, is a phenomenal over all three legs, powerhouse on the bike and can run. So to get that news that Kat Matthews is out is devastating. I'm not sure why. But um, a real, a real blow for Cat and for the average fan. And for the average fan, absolutely. Yeah, well, and, and and I would say for the average fan here, Belinda, it, it's interesting to know. At least I'm watching the the two out in front, Finley and Norton, are way ahead, yep. far ahead, uh, ahead of Morrison in third place. That biker on the third is actually being lapped, mm -hmm. so they're not that close. Yeah, third right now. Kim Morrison is almost two minutes behind Finley and Norton. The two that are out front here. Yeah, they're definitely running particularly well. One thing to note is I am quite surprised. Holly Lawrence is now dropping back. And now it's, it's you can see that Haug and Philippe are very, very close to Lawrence. So you've got Lawrence, Brandon, Language, Haug and Philippe riding very, very close. And once again, coming out here onto the, the banking at Daytona International Speedway, we see Lisa Norton going back in front of Paula Finley. Now they're getting ready. You see here, she actually came out of her shoe there as they're getting ready for T2, the second transition. They're going to undo the shoes and get ready to make the transition. And you can see second shoe now off as we have first two women. Lisa Norton and Paula Finlay coming in off the 80k bike ride. You think that was a little early to do that? No, it's better being prepared than underprepared. Right. I've seen a lot of athletes leave it too late and it doesn't end well. Right. So now they'll run their bikes into transition. Let me tell you, these first few steps, even if you've taken care of yourself during the bike ride, feel like death. Shaky. Doesn't matter how good you are, it is not a nice feeling. And it can often take, you know, that first kilometer of the run before you actually start to get into a, into a rhythm and you start to feel your stride and feel like you're actually running to the potential. Boy, that is absolutely amazing. They've done the swim and the bike, and it's two hours and 18 minutes, and they are flying. Two hours, 18 minutes of pushing their bodies to the limit. And Paula Finley, first to put the shoes on and start the run portion of the triathlon here. That was executed to perfection by Paula. And as you can see, she's not doing anything silly. She knows she's got a gap. She's not going to leave transition at a rate of not. She's just going to steadily get herself in to running rhythm. Make sure that she's feeling good. You don't want the worst thing you want to do is, is take off too quickly and then end up cramping. Kevin. 
All right, so uh, Lisa and Paula both looking actually really good as they came in here. So in years past, when we've seen folks come off the bike, it's, it's almost been cramp central here. And uh, both of them ran in quite easily and uh, comfortably. And uh, Lisa Norton sat down just to give her legs a little bit of a break and then got rolling very quickly and easily. Um, Paula definitely, though, looks like the smoother as they get started on this run. Now, Kevin, we have just been informed that Annie Haug will need to serve a two-minute penalty. Her number oh, is wow. up on the whiteboard. So that changes everything. It sure does, Belinda. Major drama unfolding here in Daytona as the German Annie Haug will serve her penalty for drafting as Paula Findlay leads the way. Look back on how the run started. Paula Finley actually passing Lisa Norton in T2. The biggest story, though, that happened, the fastest runner in the field, Annie Howe, serving a two-minute penalty for drafting during the bike. So she had to wait in the tent. An emotional day for Lisa Norton. What a performance she put out coming into this event. She knew she had a calf injury. She thought she could fight through it. But when the run started, she just couldn't continue on. Anyhow, going by Holly Lawrence, one of the favorites coming into this event. Howe has made her way up to second. She went by the leap to take that second spot. But it has been all Paula Finley. And as we join the action live, we see Lucy Hall, who was a leader out of the swim, is now walking. Belinda. The bike takes that much out of you being down in that aero position, riding the speeds that we've seen these women ride today. And some, some can handle it, and others, it just breaks them. And you normally don't know till the second, third lap of the run. But, you know, you can see that she's not comfortable. Or Lucy is not comfortable. She's cramping. And it's predominantly the hamstrings that you'll find, hamstrings and, the, and hip flexors, and they are just angry. The determination to continue on. I think we saw that with Lisa Norton. Here was a, a woman that we know had a calf injury. She was still walking. She continued to walk around the course here. Uh, it's, it's training. It's what all of these athletes have put into this, to get ready for this. And, and we watch. Paula Finley here, and we just know that when she said this is the best she's felt in five years, we wouldn't have known it until we seen this performance. I mean, exactly. yes, she can tell us that this is the well, best she's felt. You were dead right. We haven't got to see. We have never. We haven't had an opportunity to see how she's going because there's been no racing. I mean, that's why I was a little hesitant to say Paula is a favourite because I just haven't seen her out there performing in a in an actual race. I love the fact that one of her childhood heroes is Terry Fox. If you're not familiar with Terry Fox, he, the reason why I love that so much, he was one of my childhood, I shouldn't say childhood heroes, he was also one of my heroes, a, a Canadian athlete, humanitarian, cancer survivor. He took off to run across the country in Canada. She looks back, really kind of feeling it now, but. I think she's, ah, uh, that's the first ah, time I've seen her. There it is. <laughs> So literally has not raced since this race last year. That's one whole year that Paula Finlay has not been on a, an actual race course. So incredible to think she won Challenge Daytona 2019. As you see, the emotion really starting to show on her face now. To think that we fast forward a year and this is her very next <laughs> She's race. She's looking back again oh, just, in just in case. <laughs> And emotions overcoming her now as she knows what she's accomplished. She has stayed focused for so long and she comes down the final run here. Cannot believe it. And she will be the 2020 PTO champion of Challenge Daytona. Paula Finley for Canada wins again. Well, that was a truly spectacular finish, a truly spectacular race from swim through the bike through the run. I cannot fault that race at all. Wow. She's looking back wondering, wait a second, there's got to be another athlete somewhere. <laughs>
And as we wait for Annie Haugen's second to come to the finish line, let's send it to Kevin with our winner. Paula Finley, unbelievable. The disappointment in 2012. I, and, you know, I saw you crying then, uh, but we're crying for a very different reason here today. Tell us about what you're feeling right now. Oh, this is so crazy. I, I mean, I, can't, I don't even know what to say. I did not expect that, obviously. And I mean, I haven't had a good race since 2010, so this is insane. And I just like felt good all day. And yeah. I don't know. One of those perfect days that never happens, but it happened today. <laughs> what an accomplishment. Uh, even with the penalty, Annie Howe finished second in this just star-studded field of athletes. This just shows the caliber athlete of Annie Howe, you know. Now let's take a look at the top 30 finishers from the women's overall standings from the PTO 2020 championship. Canada's Paula Finley defends her title, wins by two minutes and 37 seconds. Annie Haug overcame the penalty to still come home in second. Fellow German Laura Phillip finishes third. The Brit Holly Lawrence finishes fourth. And the top finishing American, that's Sky Munch, in sixth. As we take a look at the second page, Kimberly Morrison, who was fast on the bike, comes in 13th today, 11.36 behind Finley. American Heather Jackson finished 20th, overcoming a poor start with the swim. And as we look at page three, early favorites, Carrie Lester and Sarah Crowley, they finished 23rd and 24th. And Lucy Hall, our leader out of the water, finishes in 28th. Now let's send it back down to Kevin with our second place finish. I'm here with Annie Haug, second here today. Annie, can you tell us about the race and do you know what happened out on the bike? No, not really because I really tried to be fair and I had a whole bunch of people to overtake and I thought I was the three meter ahead and it was the outer corner and I was pushing and pushing and pushing and suddenly I got a penalty so uh, I don't know because after five, lap five I was continuously the whole, pretty much the whole race on my own and yeah but it happens and I made the best out of it and Paula was just better today, so I have to accept it and make the best out of it. So I'm very proud of myself, but I still keep on pushing. And yeah, it was a great race. It was Paula Finley crossing the line first in our women's event. And when we come back, it'll be time for the star-studded men's field to be entering the water to begin their event. back to Daytona International Speedway where the men's event has just gotten underway. For the men, the greatest field of triathletes all together fighting for a piece of the $1 million. And look at that chaos right when the cannon fired. With an early lead as expected, exiting Aussie exit in first place, taking a quick look back just to see who's there. Oh, yeah. Andrea Salzberg in second with the Brownlee boys right on their feet. Looks like penguins jumping off an iceberg. Unbelievable sight. As Henry Schumann continues to lead the swim, let's go down to Kevin. Ultimately, this is just not panning out in Henry Schumann's way at all. Uh, this is not what he wanted to see happen. You're so right, Kevin, and that's the no-win situation. In fact, yeah, he's out front. He's going to come out of the water first, but by a second? I mean, come on, it's really not that big of a lead to jump out of the water, and he's carried everybody behind him with him. So it really is not a big win situation. The only way he could have done it better is to stretch that lead out to where you make the other guys behind you work. And he hasn't quite done that. He's brilliant on the swimming, no doubt about it. He's a great swimmer, but I know he would have liked to have that four or five second lead, not the one second lead. Rowdy, uh, he would have loved even more than that. Yeah. So the ideal scenario for Henry Schumann was that he and the Brownleys get out clear and he gets Alistair and Johnny to take a few pulls around the way and the three of them sort of open up a 30 second gap. Then things start getting fun. Now he's got 10 people that he's just towing along. Right. Um, and this is uh, this is not the scenario that he wanted <laughs> in right. any way, shape but, or but form. Kevin, but Kevin, there's a the, bunch of guys who are very happy it's turned out this way. But Kevin, you, you, 
the difference between this race and any other race that we normally see in long course is that you've got your, your small group of great swimmers, then you've got your next group, then you've got your next group. But here, because we've got so many short course athletes and all the best long course athletes, there is no break because they're filled. The, the gaps that would normally be there are filled with other good swimmers. So I always knew that there wouldn't be this, this one or two small groups out of the water. I knew that because we had so many fantastic swimmers, swimmers yeah. that they were going to fill those gaps and allow that long pack to stay as one. So everybody wins then from two through seven, then, right? Exactly. I mean, that's who's winning this race right now. Not necessarily Schumann, even though he's yeah. out but we do look like we have got a group, yeah, a group a of, of 12. A lot of increase in tempo right now. So we do have that group of 12. And there's about eight seconds that mm -hmm. separates them. And then we've got a small break when we've got our next group led by Fromhold and Jesper Svensson. Of course, we know Jesper Svensson is one of the best long course swimmers that we've got. The swim could be hurting right now. Gustav Eden, uh, Rudy Von Berg. Athletes that aren't a part of that first group. These guys coming out of the water now, getting ready for the transition, Kevin. Henry Skillman out first, and uh, then we've got Salvesburg. So uh, Alistair, Vincent Louis out just ahead, and uh, Gomez in behind Johnny Brownlee. So it goes Alistair, Johnny, Javier. So you've got the first three from the 2012 Olympics, and then leading the way third in the 2016 Olympics, along with. So, uh, the two winners. So we got a bunch of Olympians showing their stuff at the front of the swim. And of course, that's exactly what we expected. We know that our short course Olympic swimmers are the superior swimmer, but it is great to see, obviously, the likes of Ben Canute, Tom Davis, Adam Bowden, even Daniel Backergaard, who are our longer course athletes and are all brilliant bike riders. Great to see them up there in that front group. They're not able to get on the bikes and start riding until they get out of this transition period. There's actually a line that uh, allows them to get on the bikes. You see the shoes are already clipped on uh, to the bikes. They'll run barefoot right now until they get ready to jump on the bike. So the fact that Henry Schumann put all that work in and all of these cyclists are going to be coming out right behind him, he's got to feel a little bit disappointed that he wasn't able to put a little more distance between himself and his competitors. This is, a, this is an enormous group, but probably the biggest thing that we can take, and it wasn't up on our screen then, Sebastian Kinlay, who arguably is the fastest bike rider on the course today, along with the likes of Lionel Sanders, is only one minute down. Now, I did not predict that happening. I thought he would be at least two to three minutes down on, on this pack. So very, very impressive. He's not up on our leaderboard, but he, we have been told he is only one minute down on this lead group of men. So that is a sensational sweep. And I need you to remind all of the fans at home and the folks listening about the draft rule here. Now that they're on the bike, now that they're on the cycles, we know that it's an issue. You cannot be within 20 meters of another athlete unless you're trying to overtake them. Yeah, and you know, it's going to be particularly difficult for these men now with such a large group. We've got so many athletes that are going to be jostling for position before they get on to the track. Once they get onto the track, that 20 meter rule will apply and they will be firm on it. So these men are going to have to pull back and they're going to have to hold 20 meters. So you can imagine with a group this big, that is going to be one long train. Alistair Brownlee leads after the transition from swim to bikes. You're watching the PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona. They came out of the water and the transition zone, that first transition zone, zone saw Alistair Brownlee in a great position out of the water, able to go up and set the pace. And it was Ben Canute that took his turn up front. Again, all of these cyclists trying to stay at least 20 meters apart as anger then forged ahead. Alistair back out front. The penalties that have already been shown to the athletes for Johnny Brownlee and Vince Bowie. They will have to serve a two minute penalty at the end of this bike ride before uh, the run concludes. You see Alistair grabbing a drink. The young Magnus Detlef came out of the water way back behind everyone else and has worked his way up to the front. 
grabbed himself a drink of water. And then it was Sam Appleton who has taken over the top spot now and he's going to try to pull away. A great pack right here and Kevin that transition is going to be chaotic. Uh, it is going to be chaotic and what's going to make this even more of a challenge for these guys is they can't really make a whole lot of changes in this last lap. So normally in a race you'd be trying to jockey for a good position and everything but the way this is sorting out with everybody just getting in that line uh, there's a very good chance they're going to just stay exactly the way they are. If you're Alistair Brownlee though right now you've got a big grin on your face and you're one very happy camper because these guys have been uh, just doing a, a fantastic job for you of keeping this pace rolling and you haven't had to deal with Lionel Sanders catching up to you by the time you get to the second transition. Lionel just went flying by he's 40 seconds by, uh, back I believe the big unit is still riding along with him but as tough an athlete as Lionel Sanders is trying to make up 40 seconds on the likes of Alistair Brownlee is a challenge. Definitely. But I reckon he'll die trying. You won't. He's, 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 he's going to give it everything, and that's going to be very, very exciting to see just how many of those, those men in front of them he's able to pluck off. But I agree with you. I mean, Alistair's in the box seat right now. And literally, I mean, just a couple seconds ago, as, as Kevin was talking, those top seven bikers were all exactly two seconds apart. So it is going to be very chaotic, as you said, Rick, when we go into that. T2 and Rowdy think about you know some of the best runners that are inside the top 15 you've got Rudy Von Berg you've got Alistair Brownlee Louie obviously he's got the penalty a two minute penalty he's going to have to uh, incur Henry Schumann uh, Lionel Sanders Gustav Eden they're all up here in striking distance and all very established and good runners that could be fighting for this win here at Challenge Daytona. Yeah, no question about it. And I don't think we're going to have a situation where, and Belinda, you would know more than I would, obviously, but where you'll have a situation like Hauk, Hauk was potentially, without the penalty, going to be able to run down Finley. And, and right now, you, you just don't have a, it doesn't look like you have a Finley in here that can just say, see you later, I'm going to no. win with this thing by three minutes. Well, what, I mean, obviously the likes of uh, Gustav Eden, who's only 112 down now, and it won't, I don't see that blowing out too much more in, in this last lap. He is definitely within striking distance, and that is not, he only needs something to go slightly wrong with Brownlee up front, and he will run him down. Um, I just think that I can't make a decision yet till I see how they look off the bike, because right. Von Berg, Appleton, Brownlee, Anger, O'Donnell are all great runners. Obviously, right. Brownlee the standout. Von Berg is also a great runner in his in his own right. But if we if we can keep it at that 110 to 115 mark off the bike with some of the really good runners behind, uh, we're going to have a great race on our hand because it's going to come down to the line. They're getting ready to start pulling the feet out of the shoes as they're making their way. This is turns three and four of Daytona International Speedway. When they come off of turn four, they'll be turning back in. They'll be going to the transition two area where they'll drop their bikes, take the helmets off, uh, put on the bib, put on the race shoes, and be heading out onto the track once again. Rudy Von Berg up front right now. Appleton, Ditlip, Brownlee, Anger, O'Donnell, Davis, all right there in striking distance. 11 seconds separating this group. Looking at the distance ahead, again, I hate to look ahead and put you on the spot, Melinda, but Okay, so we've got, it's 11 mile run or 18K, right? Yes. So you've got the middle distance at a 21K, the Olympic distance at 10K, obviously a full distance a little bit uh, crazier at 42, but. <laughs> yeah, just a bit. Crazy. Uh, of, of this, of these top seven anyway, is, does anybody fit that 11 mile just perfectly? Uh, definitely Ali Brownlee. Yeah. Uh, he's incredible, he's an incredible runner by far the best runner in this field. Kevin, what do you think? What are you what are you showing us down in T2? All right, they are just coming into T2 right now and we're going to see I believe Rudy Von Berg leading the way, the young man who came third last year at the 70.3 Worlds Half Distance World Championships. 
It looks like Sam Appleton coming in right behind him. Get left, and uh, Alicia's got Sam Appleton. Yeah, absolutely. Sam looks fantastic and was so aggressive on the bike, responded to every single move, made moves. So I'm just thrilled to see how he heads out on the run here. He's putting socks on very quickly. Um, He's wearing shoes with elastics to help those go on quickly. It's always difficult to get those heels on. And then he's going to grab his number belt and any nutrition that he wants to have on the run. And back over to you, Kevin. Alistair Brownlee uh, sort of a little shaky as he was pulling those shoes on. So this bike ride seems to have taken a little more out of them than we thought. Thanks, Kevin. As we start the men's run, the American Ruby Von Berg leads the way. The PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona will return. Welcome back to the World Center of Racing for the PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona. As we come to the conclusion of the men's event, let's take a look back at some of the men's run. Transition to T2. Rudy Von Berg. Off the bike quick, then Vincent Louis had to serve his two minute penalty. Johnny Brownlee also decided to serve his a little bit later in the run. Alistair Brownlee, we knew he was going to be the force and it was only a matter of time before he got up front passing, rooting for the lead, but then falling off the pace, something looked to be wrong with Alistair Brownlee. And sure enough, he stops, was stretching, we were told it was a calf injury. Alistair Brownlee out of the competition. Thomas Davis was able to take the lead from Appleton. Those two looked like they were going to work together until Gustav Eden said, it's time for me to take over this race. And he did just that. Once he went by these two, he took off. George Goodwin has moved into second. A smile on his face on his final lap here in Challenge Daytona. Obviously, Lionel Sanders and Matt Hansen are long course specialists. They are the full distance specialists. That's what they excel at. Hansen's 35. 35, thank you. 35. Yep. Thank you. But look 35. at the run he's putting on right here. Trying Incredible. to catch George Goodwin. This is for second. He's putting everything into it. Lionel Sanders back there. Wow. Clipping it off as well. George Goodwin, you see, ready to pick the pace up if he can, if he's oh, got anything left. This is insane. And he's making the pass. Look, Look at, at that, that run. Quick look around for George to see where the next. That's almost a, he admitted defeat then by looking around to see where the next athlete was. It's always, almost like saying, okay, oh, you've got really? me. You've got me. Yeah, I don't want to fall behind the next guy. Can I stay in front of him? Hanson. This is what incredible. a kick here. This is beautiful oh. to see a 518 pace at the end of a 62 mile race overall. Unbelievable. I look, I was talking to Laura Siddle earlier this week and she picked it. She said Matt Hansen is in scintillating form. We were down on the track when they were doing some uh, track laps and I must admit he looked incredible. But I did not think he was podium material for this particular race today, just because we had so many other phenomenal athletes here. And because he is a pure long distance, half distance and long distance, uh, full distance racer. Matt so to see this. Oh. At the age of 16, he was challenged, he said, to make a list of 50 goals that he needed to complete in the next 10 years. And for some reason, <laughs> one of the goals was to complete an Ironman triathlon. Well. He's taken that list pretty seriously. He actually took the list and has kept it. He carries it with him, that list. He kept it in his wallet for 10 years. And then at the age of 25, decided, you know what? I've got to start worrying about that Ironman triathlon that I've talked about as a goal. Do. Yeah. And so he's got into the triathlon. And what a performance we have seen out of Matt Hansen here. Also, you see race leader here, Gustav Eden has pulled away. He has a one minute 17 second lead over second place Hansen. The lucky hat has worked once again. It looks like for him Belinda. Such a cool story. I love it. Can you imagine all of his uh, triathlon fans in Taiwan now going off? <laughs> they will be cheering. He's close enough now. He's about ready to see the finish line. 
the fans will cheer him on as he comes down for the final time the 25 year old from Norway Gustav Eden the 70.3 world champ top draft legal triathlete fourth at Tokyo in a test event last year and now he can add to his impressive resume Challenge Daytona, the 2020 championship for PTO. Gustav Eden with a smile on his face. Gustav Eden has done it. He's won Challenge Daytona. What an incredible race. Able to walk across the finish line. Current 70.3 world champion and now our PTO 2020 champion. Great job! What an incredible race from young Gustav Eaton today. Three hours and five minutes. Let's take this honor I'm giving you. That's almost what we need. Thank you. You are my friend. You're getting the medal. Thanks. Look at this, what a performance we've seen out of Matt Hanson. This is definitely for me the performance of the day. Absolutely incredible. He's running as though the boogeyman's behind him. He says that's the thing he's scared of. Hate that guy. Well, he's not going to catch you today, Matt. Matt Hanson, second in Challenge Daytona. He should be. That was a wonderful, wonderful race from Matt Hansen. Yes, I have to interview you. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> George Goodwin. Alicia Lang down the line. line. Alicia Lang down the line. Don't go anywhere. Lionel Sanders. Great race from Lionel. He look at the look at the pain on his face. He gave it everything. Wow. Oh, oh yeah. Now the reality starts to steady. Rudy Von Berg. Kicking it all the way to the end. Let's hear from the winner. He's with Alicia. Gustav, congratulations on an absolutely dominant performance. Walk us through your day. Uh, oh, wow. the swim were not good. I was pretty uh, afraid that I already blew up my race already in the swim. And then on the bike, I had no control in the start, but then I realized that the cars were following the leaders. And I weren't really that far behind on the bike, but I decided to just not go over my ability because 18K is pretty long in a run. And then I saw I gaining a lot of the leaders from the start of the run. And then I went to the front. I had like 100% control. And then like five minutes later, I really started feeling it. But luckily I took a gel in the start of the run and when the caffeine kicked in after like, I don't know, 30 minutes, then I was like back in the zone. That's so awesome. In the end I was, I had pretty pretty good control, yeah. So tell us about this lucky hat of yours. <laughs> yeah, I started to believe it actually brings luck for real now because every time I wear it, it's, uh, I have an amazing race. Yeah. So yeah, I just found it on the ground in, uh, in Japan last year and it's from Taiwan. And like, I really feel like a connection with the Taiwanese people now. So it's, uh, it's so cool to, to be there, it's an honor. Gustav Eden from Norway brings home the win here in Daytona with an incredible performance. Let's take a look at our men's top 30. Great performances again. Eden, Hanson, Goodwin, uh, Lionel Sanders, who won the event a year ago, uh, comes home in fourth on a, a spectacular run, a spectacular biker. Got out of the water way later than what he would have hoped for to be in contention for the win. You see Vincent Louis there also, only two minutes and 15 seconds back. Remember, that's with a two minute penalty. So he would have been within 15 seconds of Gustav Eden. There's T.O., Tim O'Donnell, 16th. Back through the field, Johnny Brownlee in 30th. Again, he also had a two minute drafting penalty that he had to serve. Now let's go down with Alicia Kay, who's caught up with our second place finish. Wow, Matt, that was just unbelievable. Um, tell us what happened out there on the run. Uh, I've been uh, 
waiting for my run to show up all year. And uh, I picked a good day to have a good day, I guess. Uh, yeah, I, I biked really well. I, I'm pretty happy with where I came out of the water uh, to set up the day. I ended up getting dropped by, uh, by the Uber bikers about the halfway point and then really I was on my own on the bike the rest of the day and so it was just a constant reminder to stay focused. George Goodwin, what a performance. Oh. I don't think anybody saw that coming. Did you see it coming? Did you know you were ready to have this kind of day? Uh, yeah, I've been like putting in the, like really good work over the past like, I've had like 10 weeks like perfect, like absolutely perfect. And um, yeah, like I, I knew I had a top 10 in me and then like yeah going off onto the run and i was like oh like I'd, i had a really bad cramp in my left quad in transit in like t2 i was like oh maybe like the run went maybe just won't happen today and just yeah like managed to build my way through and everyone everyone went off really quick and i just like sort of like gradually moved my way through smiles on their faces and we saw from these athletes smiles on their faces because it was an opportunity to compete they have had a tough 2020 season and these athletes got the opportunity to come out here and prove who the best of the best was. Yeah, incredible to see. And of course, we knew going into this race that there was a lot of unknowns. You know, a lot of people have had disrupted uh, training regimes, no racing this season. So it was always going to be an incredible race, and it did not disappoint. To see Paula and Finlay come home with what I call a faultless race to take the win, truly incredible. Of course, in the men's race, we knew it was going to be a real battle between our long course athletes and our short course athletes, and it did not disappoint. Well, I just want to, well, just want to thank you, Rick, and, and especially Kevin, Alicia, and my, my partner, Belinda, for kind of holding my hand all day long. I really appreciate you guys letting me be here. Hope you enjoy the PTO 2020 Championship at Challenge Daytona. Thanks for watching.